The following is a technical presentation on how I propose integrating GraphAd with backend systems and CRMs. And at the outset, I just need to point out that I do not currently have any customers that are using this um, and have no real, don't even know if I'll actually have anybody who wants to because at this level, we're not talking about an application that we would be selling on the App Store. We'd, talk, we'd be talking about a bespoke, bespoke application for a larger corporation. And so a lot of what I'm presenting they may have other ideas on how they'd want to do it. Nonetheless, um, I think that there's a lot of value to this. So historically, the issue came up where basically when we start completing forms, um, how do we actually get the data from one page? If I type it in here, I don't want to keep typing in every time. And so we just started off with the, the simple problem of I've got a form, I want to put in some information. And for this example, I'll just fill out the address. So say, for, for example, 33 Elm Street. So I hit return. I want to tab to the next field. And we've noticed some things happen. So first off, the inspector name got populated. And so there's a trigger that actually pulls the value from um, the parameters. So I put in my name. It populates a date for me. But it actually takes this value and populates it in these smaller fields, which are difficult for the user to press their finger inside of. And so I can make it um, very easy to have a WYSIWYG application where they can have their exact form and they can put the fields that they're going to type into and they can put them in big, bold letters so they don't have to worry about you know trying to um, touch inside a real small field. But it, um, And then at the same time, give them all the drawing page that they need. Now what it does is it actually takes those values and if we go into text mode and we turn on the settings and turn on the field names, we'll see that all these fields have names now. And so they form key value pairs. So customer city, whatever I type in, customer name, whatever I type in, those form pairs. I've got a dictionary that's stored at the application level or actually I should say at the document level and it captures that information. And so now as I go to different pages, um, that's an event. It basically says, okay, I've got a new page. Go out there and populate any data that I've got associated with it. And so that's how it moves the data from one page to another. Now, if I overwrote this, um, this data on another page, say, for example, um, each customer I went to, I'd actually fill out a new form. I could put in the customer's information, and that can be maintained separately. So it only has to have an event where it actually triggers to actually take the data from memory and actually populate these, these fields. Now, as we get into integration, um, the original idea was I'd have appointments, okay? And so a couple of things came up. First off, um, if I had a series of appointments that got downloaded, uh, backend systems typically don't have uh, the geocoding associated with it, so they just have an address. And so you can load all the addresses and then you can actually geocode it using Apple's APIs. Um, but we're going to go through here. Um, since I didn't have anybody who was using it, I just went ahead and gave them the mapping feature. And I'll take these appointments out and see if you didn't have um, integration with the backend system, what you'd be able to work with. And so this simulates if, say, for example, we're not integrated. Um, we come to this page. You can then put in your appointments, and you can do it two ways. You can either just open a new appointment and add it, and you'd get that form, and you'd fill the data out. Or in the case of new construction, you could actually just pick a location on the map, press on it. It'll automatically generate, it'll automatically re reverse geocode the location of the map. Um, and then all you have to do is put in a name and we'll just say Rob. And now it actually stores that information. Um, and so if I bring up an appointment, we see all that information is now cached. And if I open a form, all the information relevant to that form is now populated. And so we'll actually see if here, if we zoom in and we'll go ahead and take off the names, we've got the address and the location. Now, to integrate this with a backend system, I've created some specialized forms. So everything we've seen in terms of uh, the map so far is just anybody who has the um, least version of GraphPad has that feature and they can put in their appointments themselves before they go out. And then if they have an appointment, they can actually um, open it up and get turn by turn directions. So it makes it pretty handy. Um, but if we're going to integrate with a backend system, um, I've created some additional forms. So if we get went under settings, this is just a location I put them. 
a good integration. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a very standardized um, APIs that I work with. So I'm going to pass up to this URL and whatever you put in here in terms of your actual web service call. And I'm going to pass up the company, a password, and a user ID. And that's going to get that user's appointments for the day. So if we um, save this, turn this on. So now when I open up the map, it's going to make that web service call. And we'll actually see the other appointments show up. And so I've got Johnson Supply, and that's actually downloaded um, from my service. Let me try that again because I thought I had other ones. I think I might have deleted those. Um, anyway, so here's the service call. Now, these are the fields that I'm anticipating, but when I make that service call, I'm going to take whatever gets passed down and I'm just going to store that JSON. And so that then takes that JSON um, and it's going to form the responses as well. And so say, for example, I have additional fields. All I have to do is map those um, to a corresponding field inside the application. And so in this case, I actually just created an additional field that I was sending down. So um, you can actually see the name of it. And we'll actually zoom in on this. Oops, sorry, that's a new field. We'll zoom in. We'll see it's called test column. Um, and it just takes all the data that, that comes down, packs it up as JSON, and then forms key value pairs that get stored in the responses. And that'll go throughout the application. You open it up. And so, for example, you had um, the physical address and the billing address. Um, if those fields were named appropriately, it would just populate it with the um, data that was downloaded as the um, form is open to that page. So that carries through not just with um, the static fields, but say, for example, we had icons. And so as we go from room to room or something like that, we wanted to fill out um, window measurements. And we wanted to capture those measurements. The forms that we actually populate, in this case, I don't have those fields associated uh, named, but then we would actually have these fields named as well. And so as they populated this data inside of these fields, there would be a field name associated with it, and it would loop through, and basically for each one of the images, it would say what type of image it was and the fields associated with it. So measurement A, measurement B, et cetera, on through the list. And in a similar fashion, we would do the same thing with tables. And so if we go to um, just add a table to the drawing here, we go to text. Let's kind of move this guy over. We'll notice that these also have fields associated with them. So again, you'd have the type of table, um, and then you would have these key value pairs that would be passed. And so that's essentially how I would capture the data. And then if we go back to the settings and we turn on um, that we're going to upload, say, for example, a PDF, the XML, or both, and we save that. Now when we go to um, upload the data, we would just have an upload data field, and you would actually press on that, and it would actually take all that um, information. It would compile it into JSON and then send it up to the server. And that's really the technical aspects of how I would propose doing this. That's if this was just an application I was going to work with another company or I needed to integrate it with, say, for example, Salesforce or another CRM that's off the shelf. Um, but when we got into a um, company that actually needed a bespoke application, they would probably um, have the values that they're looking for and tell me exactly what they wanted to do. And so all of this is really only relevant to another vendor supply product. And that is my presentation. Thanks.